Alright guys, what's up? This is a tutorial for the Mark 2D with Wax Room X Pro. Um, this is what it looks like when it's done. It's sort of a mid, mid-high. I know it doesn't look like it, but let me see if I can... When you put the ball in, it sits kind of right there. Um, it's one of those things where because of the bottom rail, even if it looks like the mesh is kind of diagonal, that's where the ball, yeah, it's a mid pocket, whatever. Um, so anyway, you might want a higher pocket. We're going to talk about all that kind of stuff more. Um, but so kind of use this as a tutorial for this pocket, but also just to teach you some kind of concepts, ideas, knots, whatever. Um, and you can change the pattern to make it your own. Um, so this is the finished version. Sort of like a cooking show. I'm showing you the done version. I have two of them that I had to do, so I'm um, really ah, fix this. A really tight channel for a defensive pocket, but not so tight that it restricts the ground ball from coming in here. Um, and just a lot of mesh contact with the ball. That's where a lot of hold comes from without creating too much whip. Um, this does look like a lower pocket for a defenseman. I personally would rather give a defensive player a pocket where it's the hold isn't caused by the hook or the um, or the higher placement of the ball. Um, I just think that a, a lower pocket, more mesh contact, I think it leads to a more consistent passing stick, which the reality is that defenders, for every one shot you take, you probably throw hundreds or even more passes. Um, so anyway, boom, finished version. We're going to put this aside for a minute. And now we are going to go through the sidewall tutorial. So the first thing is I did just a regular nine diamond protected top string onto the first hole. All right. Let me get in here. So I'm going to use this red string to help demonstrate it a little bit more um, so we're gonna do stringing on camera it's the worst um, we're gonna do we're gonna loop on the first diamond onto the next um, sidewall hole And then what we're going to do is we are going to go down the next diamond, skip one sidewall hole, go to the inside of the next one, pull it tight, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back through from the outside and up that same diamond. So this is a two hole SI, um, I've been calling it an inverted SI. Doesn't really matter what you call it. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing, skipping a hole. So down through the diamond, skip a uh, sidewall hole, inside, outside, back up. It's really important here to keep tightening this whole thing down. Um, so that the mesh diamonds are all the way against the, I gotta get a better filming setup. I hope this looks good. Um, keep tightening. That's not perfect, but all right, that's pretty good. And we're gonna do it again, skipping, uh, stringing, I mean, skipping a sidewall hole. So down through the diamond. through the inside of the neck of that uh, sidewall through the outside and back up the mesh diamond and then what we're gonna do is an empty interlock but the way we're gonna do it is by going through the inside go under what you already had Uh, 
this way. Well, that's not what that is. So let's... Sorry. Go over what you already had. I'm thinking of doing a knot. Uh, you know, new stuff for me too. A lot of times when I'm stringing this, um, I do this stuff wrong and I have to go back and redo it because it's new stuff for me. And, um, yeah, I just haven't done as much. Um, so it's just really important to go slow and make sure that whatever you do on this side, you do the same on that side. So that's why I've really only done two different knots. Well, besides this little transitionary knot, um, I've only done two so that I, it's easier to remember. Um, anyway, at this point, I would normally go to this side, copy it. Um, it's, I find that the pockets come out more symmetrically when you don't go all the way down one side, you go to the, you kind of go back and forth. Um, not like every knot, but this is kind of the point where we're done with our, um, our channel creating knots and we're going to move into our pocket knots. So we had been going down the diamonds. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go up the next diamond. Okay. We're going to skip a stringing hole, sidewall hole, and we're going to go inside the plastic. Then we're going to go back through the plastic. And we're going to go down the diamond. So this is basically, um, God, I'm just thinking of names like the worst. This is basically a two diamond, I mean a two hole SI to the inside. So you can see right here, it's to the inside like that. Okay. So now I'm going to repeat that three more times. I'm going to go up. I'm going to skip a hole from the inside, from the outside, pull it all through, go down, okay, we can check it, looks good, on two of them, sometimes you have to pull it to get it kind of sitting right. Um, so again, two more of these, we're gonna go up. We are going to go through the plastic from the inside, through the plastic from the outside, and we are going to shoot down the diamond. Um, so, um, I'm going to try and talk while I string because this is, I'm just going to be repeating. Basically, what I'm trying to do is get the mesh to the inside of the plastic like I did, um, you can see in the Mirage tutorial that I did and something that Sidewall Jedi, ah, Sidewall Jedi, every video I say it's wrong, you can see that he's kind of um, popularized. Um, and the idea being just to create a, a tighter channel for more mesh contact, it's very hard on a defensive head to get any contact with the mesh from a channel because of how wide the head is. So basically we're narrowing the head um, and without having to wrap it around the front like you did in that Mirage video, um, I just think the string is more protected. All right, so we've got four of those in. Um, if you wanted a higher pocket, you would do a fifth one without skipping, but I'm just gonna show you the pocket that I did. So now I'm going to leave this hole empty. So when I go up through the next diamond, I need to skip one, two, three to go inside and then go back up to that second one. Right, tighten it down, go down. Down the diamond. I'm gonna pull on it to make sure everything's cool. It looks good. And now again, I'm going to um, leave an empty sidewall hole. So skipping down three, going back up one. Pull it tight. 
go down the diamond. So really I've only done two knots besides the transition. Um, and both of them are sort of like SIs, but just a little different. Um, and now what I'm gonna do to finish is I'm gonna go up through this diamond and in the plastic through the last stringing hole that would be leaving one two empty um, you can do it through I guess the night I don't know this is just how I, I usually end on the end pulling it all up go ahead and tie that off so it's only one side but as you can see it's all here to the inside um, why don't I get the finished one to talk about it a little bit more um, and then I did um, a nine diamond bottom string so here's the thing I used 11 diamonds starting from the loop um, I usually only used well usually <laughs> I often only use 10 diamonds um, this is a defensive head though so it's wider um, I ended up using 11 but since I used 11 I did a pretty tight pretty tight um, nine diamond bottom string. You could do a 10 diamond bottom string a little looser. Um, I just, you know, I, I don't want it to be illegal. This has been stretched out um, a little bit, or pretty well, I should say. Um, so again, if you want it higher where I skipped, um, just move that one up, shift everything up one. Basically, you'll get a higher pocket. Um, in terms of using different knots here, um, I find that using SIs to the inside keep the mesh from protruding. Um, on this head, it probably wouldn't matter because it's wide enough. Um, on an attack head, it, it, if the mesh protrudes, it can lead to the ball not coming out when you turn it over or um, channel-wise. Um, I just, I like this kind of method of stringing like I said before, for defensive heads to just keep um, keep it from kind of getting too much of a catch point um, and nice, smooth, easy passing. So anyway, like I said, I want this to just sort of be a guide for you um, to open your mind up to a different way of looking at how to string. How durable is this? Good question. Don't really totally know yet. I haven't... Um, I haven't really gotten enough testing in with it to say. Um, my concern is that, you know, obviously, even though it's better than wrapping it around the top, the exposed string just makes it more likely to break. Um, the way I feel about it is that I do about 95% of my stringing for one organization, one team, basically. You, well, organization, I'll say, youth and high school, but mostly for the high school, and um, I'm out there at their practices, I coach them, and so if one of these strings does happen to break, um, I, I'm just gonna replace it for free, because I just wanna give them the best pocket I can give them. Um, if they start, like I've said, probably said this in the Mirage video, if they start snapping all the time, I'm gonna have to rethink this. Um, I don't know that you wanna put nail polish on here, I don't know, actually, I don't know why not. You could put a little nail polish over the strings once you have it dialed in. Um, that just protects it a little bit more. Um, I would say I would not yet endorse stringing this way if you are um, shipping your heads out and stringing for people that you don't see all the time. I just feel like um, there's a chance that the string's going to snap and you kind of screw that person over um, in that sense. Um but, you know, do what you want to do. That's just my feelings on it. So anyway, um, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. Um, and hopefully uh, you guys, if you do get a chance to try this out, whether it be this specific pocket or just this methodology, um, please let me know um, what you think about it, um, if you have any ways to improve it, um, if it's durable, just basically anything um, that you can think of, I would love to know. Um, so yeah, check out, um, I'll throw some pictures up from my Instagram, Smash Time Strings. You can 
see. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it.